Hi everyone, it's Kelly from The Hub. I am here today with Judy Wechter, the Site Administrator from CareerLink. How are you? I am fabulous, Kelly. How are you? Excellent. I'm doing very well, very well. So um, we've been talking about a lot of different kinds of things that uh, that uh, CareerLink offers and, and educational opportunities and practicing opportunities. So today I, I, I wanted to talk about people who are over 50 getting a job. So um, this is a concern, I think, in general for people. And I also think that during this COVID stuff, this could be more of a concern for people. So I think that uh, we got to talk about it. So is it harder? Is it harder for people over 50 to change jobs or do those kinds of things? Kelly, it is a very loaded question to ah. talk about individuals over the age of 50 seeking employment. It is a loaded question because there are multiple levels to that. And there's even an additional level to that right now because of the virus. First of all, it's normal and typical job seeking skills, techniques, all of that doesn't go anywhere. It's all the same. You need to have your resume, you need to have the proper appearance. You need to be able to handle yourself in an interview. Most importantly, you need to be persistent. All of those things are still in place. They are in place for anybody who's a job seeker. One of the things that individuals over the age of 50 encounter is probably more rejection than they've ever felt throughout their working career. And it's really a hard thing to be positive when you are when you feel that you are experiencing more rejection than you have in the past. Because in your head, you don't feel any different. You feel that the whole skill set that you have had used and utilized throughout your career is still there. Right. You are still the same person. However, the playing field concerning careers and jobs are very, 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 very different today. And although we can help you with the resume, we can help you with the interview, we can help you with cover letters, we can help you with all of that. The one thing we cannot help you with that is really the largest obstacle for older individuals is technology. About 85% of the obstacles that uh, job seekers over the age of 50 experience is the gap in their knowledge about technology. Hmm. And that is something that they have to do on their own. Hmm. Now we have, of course, we talked about metric skill up and that's online learning. There are other platforms, other organizations that offer training. We have workshops at CareerLink, different levels of computer basics. But it is going to be an ongoing effort in order for them to become familiar with, understand, and constantly learn about technology. And Kelly, that scares the bejeebers out of them. Right, because they feel like they're facing an uphill battle before they even start. So they're, they're, you're just not comfortable. You're like, because no. you, don't, you don't know the jargon. You don't know what people are saying. You're afraid that when you walk into the interview, they're going to be talking about stuff and you're going to feel like an idiot. Well, and let me say, Kelly, you can have a great resume. You can have your interview skills really sharp. You can have the ability to communicate and relate your skills, but no matter how good you are, you're still going to have to be able to function electronically in every job, practically every job is going to come up. Right. And unless you have been out there trying to improve your skills, you are going to be left behind. You may be one of the top candidates, 
but very unlikely to be selected if someone similar to you has more knowledge and is more comfortable with technology. Right, it's interesting. Um, I think that people who are, you know, older than a certain age, above 50, whatever that is, can remember when they had an assistant or their parents had an assistant and those assistants would take care of all those things that you sort of didn't want to do, whether it was technology or those kinds of things. And today's work doesn't look like that as much. And you have to do all those things that you may have put off on somebody else that you didn't want to do because it was technology or it was, you know, whatever it was. So you, you're right. You're right. You have, you got to just bite the bullet and learn whatever you got to do to make it work. Yeah. You know, we have had job seekers, older job seekers, and again, classifying those as individuals over the age of 50. We have had them come in and say, well, I, I have some experience. And we dig a little bit deeper and we find out that they've been using the same machine, pressing the same computer buttons for the last 20 years. That is not relatable technology. And, and that's something that they have to get over. Well, I've been working on a computer for the last 15, 10 years, but I've also been doing the exact same job. So one of the things that is not unique to individuals, job seekers over the age of 50, is exploration of what they really want to do more than ever. If they really feel that the computer gap, the technology gap is something that they're not going to probably be able to close in a relatively short period of time. They really need to do some technology, uh, excuse me, they need to do some personal exploration. For example, um, what do I want in my next job? Am I willing to travel? Am I willing to move? Um, are there physical limitations? What about things financially? Will I take a lower salary? What do I want? Do I want to go into a new industry? What type of employer do I want? Every job seeker, no matter how old they are, goes through this type of exploration in order to give them a proper guidance and direction. And we talked about that concerning career navigation about two weeks ago. So individuals over the age of 50 have to do the exact same thing. The, the exact same thing. Above and beyond that, technology is looming over it all but you still have to do some serious exploration, what you want, what you don't want. And what we do know, Kelly, is the less technology, the lower the salary. So if you don't have some of those pieces concerning elect, uh, computers and elect, uh, some things that are done electronically, you those jobs are going to be more of the lower end wage jobs where knowledge in that area is not required. And my concern is for older individuals who still feel that they have a significant amount of years yet to work and contribute, that there's going to be a gap in the amount of money that they expect to still earn uh, till a certain age because what they have learned, what they've been paid in the past is something that they're not going to be able to duplicate. So that gap in earnings certainly can be uh, very significant and, and, and potentially damaging to the older individual. So like I said in the beginning, it's layered. It's a very layered issue. Yeah. So are there, so there's lots of ways that I could learn how to do things better how to increase my technology skills. Other than that, do I face any other kinds of obstacles? Are, are there people who just won't hire people who are over 50 or over 50-ish because they're too expensive, they're too whatever other kinds of things there are? I mean, it, it, is that out there? So I'm gonna use myself as an example. I am considered an older individual. 
And when I lost my job in 2017, it was a good job. And I was absolutely confident that I would be able to replace that job. And in the past, when I had been separated from my employer, I was able to secure employment within the six months that you receive unemployment compensation. This time, my unemployment ran out. And I took a part-time job because I needed some cash flow. Although I have a spouse, we still have responsibilities. And I took a part-time job. And then when I went to secure a full-time job, I accepted a job that was lower than my abilities and a far lower salary than I was accustomed to. And yet I needed to have something full-time in place. It was about four months after that I was able to secure the position here at CareerLink, of which I am so very grateful because I believe it matches my experience and my skill set. But the most important thing that this wasn't the pathway I ever experienced before when I was unemployed. So I describe it as going from lily pad to lily pad to lily pad until I was able to find a home. And that is something that older individuals may not be prepared for because like them and myself in my head, I didn't think that I should be viewed any other way than I saw myself. But the reality is absolutely employers, in my opinion, do view individuals over the age of 50 differently. That doesn't mean you still can't be employed. That doesn't mean you still can't find a job that is a good fit for you. That doesn't mean that at all. What it does mean is you need to be aware of it and it's going to take a longer period of time to probably get where you wanna go. I mean, I, I was taught as a kid by my parents that you get a job for life. I mean, that was in the days of Kodak and IBM and GM and, yep. and all that stuff. And you get a job and essentially you'll, you'll die at your desk. You'll die on your factory floor. You'll die in your whatever. And that, that was the, and that that was noble. That was the thing you aspired to do. And that doesn't really exist in almost any career anymore. And I think that if you were taught that, and then your reality is different than that, you feel like you have failed yourself, you've failed your family, you've failed whoever. And it's a hard thing to stop having your own little pity party and figure out what to do next. And so I think that that's a, getting over that mental block can be very challenging for some people. Even if, though I, never felt like I, you know, like I didn't have a Kodak job. I didn't have, you know, all those kinds of things, but I was taught that, that that was the right thing to do. Cause that's how business was conducted, Kelly. Absolutely. That is the type of job. That is what was out there. That is the workforce that was needed. That was the workforce that made us advance the way we needed to advance. But in all of those advancements, many of those companies have already gone by the wayside. You know, the world is a much smaller place than it used to be. So all of those things that we used to count on concerning opportunities no longer exist. You know, one of the things that older individuals do not have experience doing, and that is networking. And they think, right. well, what exactly is networking? Does that have to do with computers? And no, networking has to do with connecting with as many people as possible and letting them know that you're looking for a job. Not only that you're looking for a job, but this is the job that I want. And you may have to kiss a lot of frogs until you get to your prince, but you gotta keep on talking. And that's networking. It can be as very simple as talking to people in your church or talking to people in your family or any social group that you belong to past individuals that you worked with, past employees, your friends. It doesn't have to be totally sophisticated, although you can get more involved with platforms like LinkedIn and Facebook, 
but you have to be able to talk about what you want and say it as often as you can. So networking is something that individuals are not accustomed to because they didn't have to. It was literally picking up anything off the ground was a job that you wanted. You didn't have to reach for anything. Right, and that, that there are people who thought that if, you're, if you say that you're looking, that that's shameful, that you're being disrespectful to the employer that you have. And so a lot of people of a certain age have to get over that too, that, that that's not what it's about anymore. That e nope. things change, you have to adapt, and you are here for a time doing the best you can and you're gonna, you could move to another place and do the best you can there. And so that's, that's another hump I think that people have to get over that it's not shameful to say, hey, I'm looking. I'm always sort of looking. My resume is up to date. I've got skills. I could do this too. And so I think that it's a lot of your, the way you think has to change too. Yeah. Oh, if you, if you have been in the same, with the same employer doing the same job for five years and you go on an interview, one of the first questions they're going to ask is why are you still there? Right, which is such a change from you stay yeah. there for 35 years. Your father yeah. worked here, you work here, you're gonna, your son's gonna work here. No one does that. No. Unless and, you have a family business, right. Right, and trust me, at CareerLink, we can help you answering those types of questions. Good. Even if you've been there for 10 years and you look for another opportunity, not that your employer has let you go or uh, they moved out of the area or they, were bought out by someone else. We here at CareerLink, with the very professional and knowledgeable staff that we have, you know, can help you prepare to answer those types of questions. Why have you been there for the last five years? And what are you looking for? So it's not the end of the world, but you need to be prepared. Employers are looking for employees that are staying current and are looking to advance or looking for other opportunities. You know, the, the employers want individuals who are fresh. I have always said this, the second you are hired, your stock starts to go down. And that's literally what it is today. And in order for your stock to be higher or for the value to be seen in what you are and who you are is you need another employer to see it. And that's really the environment today. So it's not good or bad, right. it's the way it is. The business cycles are very short. You need to be as updated and current as you can. You need to have your resume updated. You need to continue to network and you need to be able to keep seeking what you are looking for. You need to be persistent and you need to have a positive attitude of 110%. And it's unfortunately required for individuals over the age of 50 because it's a long haul. That's awesome. Judy, thank you so much. This has been really helpful. Thank you. You are more than welcome. And of course, CareerLink is here to help. Absolutely. We'll talk again next week. Thank you so Absolutely. much. Absolutely. Have a great weekend. See you, everybody.